All right. Hello. Welcome again. Welcome to today's episode. Uh, Cardio Box 101. And this is where we're talking about how I teach my, my Cardio Box classes and all. Looking at, at, at this shadow behind me, I don't like it. Let me see if I can't remove it. since I can't remove it. Nah, I can't. Alright, Cardio Box 101. So now we're going to talk about... On the video I did uh, on Tuesday, I actually spoke about how uh, 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 this thing should fit and all the music and everything. So that's the part I'm going to talk about now. So when you are building a movement, first let me start with the music. When I'm making the music, I always make sure that I do, a lot of people will tell you about 32 counts, I know. I do 64 counts. So each on the mix, every segment, every, I'm a bit, I'm a, I'm a pace. And you will find here and there where I could not chop it up properly and you find that there is a bit a, a hammer, maybe a, a, a one, but that doesn't happen very often. And I always know where that is. I always take note where that is. So all my beats, they go in pairs. Two, four, six, so the hammer, hammer 64, the whole mix. The reason why I do that, uh, I don't want when I'm teaching to find myself counting I just want to know as I'm listening I know how many we've done so far because I put markers a lot of people hear uh, a whistle or, 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 or some sound in my in my music and they think that I'm just I'm just adding the atmosphere maybe and and all that stuff I'm sure there's a lot of people if you can be honest on the comment section be honest and tell me you thought that it was just a signature. No. Or the claps. It's not just a signature. It's a marker. That marker is telling me how many I've done because it's combining those 64 counts. Once the 64 counts end, I change the marker and I use another one. That is telling me now that's, that's, that's the next 64. So every new 64 counts, it's got a marker. So 64, when it ends, I change the marker. I've got another one. I change. I understand. This is something I, I've done since when I did my music in 2015. Yeah, since 2015, I've been using this. So I've been using this for how many years now? For eight years. This is my eighth year uh, with my music, uh, having my music with markers. And, and these markers, they help me when I'm teaching. I know for sure how many times I've done. That's why every time when I'm teaching, I will always do equal amount on both sides because when it comes to music, I use it to, 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 to mark how long I've been doing the exercise. And it helps me to tell when I should change. Now, when you are teaching, building these movements, you know that if you are doing it, if it's an eight count move and you are doing it for, you want to do it for two blocks, you start it at the beginning of the mark. And then when the marker ends at the end of 64, you know that you've done two blocks. 64 those who don't know it's it's a block takes 32 counts so when i'm talking about your 64 i'm talking about two blocks right so if it's an eight count move by the time a block ends you would have done it four times by the time the 64 counts end you would have done it eight times so if you want it to be so it can be two blocks or it can be four blocks so if you want to do it 16 times you will do it for four blocks and then you know you started with this marker when it ends you start a new one then this one should not end when this one is about to end you change it 
and because you just had it when it started you know you can't near two blocks you know that okay this is the second block it's going to change now there's another thing that it does that's one thing the second one is that with music you get different dynamics so a lot of uh, 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 when we are taught music for the first time we are taught to understand the first 32 count now there are dynamics in music apart from the 32 count a lot of people will tell you about a downbeat others will tell you about it and, and, and all those things i don't i i, I know a downbeat is something different which is it is very important in aerobics uh, but it we don't use it to we don't use it to decide how much energy we put there is a beat other people call it a beat drop no it's not a beat drop actually a beat drop is something else it's a break <laughs> it's a break when the music is playing loud and then it just drops it it breaks basically the artist breaks the kick the chain of the kick of the kick drum and and and, and break cut some other instruments and then the music starts going playing without beats and uh, without the kick drum let me not say beats because it, they are beats it plays without the kick drum then it, that music is on a break so from today onwards it's not a a, a, a downbeat it's a break that thing let me say again that thing where the music plays without the kick drum it's not a downbeat it's a break a downbeat is the first beat of the phrase that one when you're finding one that's finding the downbeat so all the odd numbers one three five seven those are down beats up beats two four six eight so if you listen to electro it goes oh, 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 all those ones that have got a ch, those are up beats the down beat is the one that goes oh. yeah so so we always start on the down beat which is one and we find another down big down beat on five so uh, in uh, in music they, they they count one two three four one two three four one two three. in aerobics we combine the two in that one straight line those two they call them bars we combine those two bars and we make the eight the, the eight counts let me let me not move away from the main subject so when when we are when when i am approaching the break of the music that's when i put clips when the music is playing and it's going on to a break in my mixes i put in clips these clips are telling me that up next is going to be a break so it's more like a a, a sign it's a marker it's telling me up next is going to be a break when i'm going out of a break on the block the following block is going to be out of the break i put in claps then the claps are telling me that now from here we're going to go so i can know before time that the next block we are going and because i did it i sat in front i sat with it i listened as well i know it's going to happen Sometimes I do make mistakes, but because I listen to my mixes before I go to class, then I'm able to pick up those mistakes and fix them. I also put in clips when a song ends, right on the last block of the song, and the next block is going to be the new song only. Then I put in clips. That tells me to start now knowing, okay, this one ends here, and then the next one, the new song starts exactly from here that way i'm able to know and to remember how i structured the next song this whole work i do it when i'm sitting here in front of my laptop i do all this so that when i get to class i focus on teaching and i focus on the participant 
skill, which is very important because you don't want to be trying to remember the music whilst you to be trying to rem to get the uh, the beats of the music whilst you've got people in front of you. Whether you're teaching with a new CD or not, you should still be able to interpret it properly because music interpretation is everything. So you get those in music, you get those uh, uh, the, where I was, you get choruses, you get verses, you get those are dynamics of the music. So on those dynamics, I use them as well. Sometimes you'll find that an artist has got a hook which is which is 32 counts and a, and a, and the chorus which is 64 counts. Then now, on what I'm doing, I can either repeat the hook or remove the hook and place it somewhere else. Maybe combine it with another hook that was there. But whatever works, I listen to the song and then I restructure it the way I want it to sound and the way I want to deliver it to the class. Now with all these dynamics, when the chorus comes, you know that the chorus will be the nice part of the song. The amount of energy that you put on that chorus as well. So yeah, today I wanted to talk about music. I'm not sure if and Bambula Magakuluna. In a nutshell is just like you would go into a grid class where there will be music that's counting for you. Four, three, two, one. Go, 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 go. Four, three, two, one, break. Now, in this case, we don't have the counting. The song is structured in a manner that is grid-like. You do the movement. When the movement, when, when the beats are saying, when the markers are saying now, this 64 ends, you change the movement. They do the next movement. Now, because you've got markers, because it, these markers are also marking verses and choruses and everything, the music is going to change when you reach that part as well. When the music changes, you change the movement. The people feel like there was a change. They've responded to it. When when I did my training, this this was one of the most like one of those things where I felt like wow, I never thought about this thing. That is why people who come to my class still enjoy the class, even though the combos are not saying much. They are basic. There's nothing special with them. But you take those combos, you take the music, you take the changes, how I change them, how the whole thing goes, it makes a package. And, and someone will come, they do the class, they don't know why they enjoyed it. And, and it's, it's because of the amount of work that is, 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 it has been put on the, on the class. And then, the introduction of movements. This is very important. Each movement should be introduced when there is that number of beats left before the next phrase starts. If a movement is a four count move, you introduce it when there are four counts left before the next block starts. If your movement is eight counts, you introduce it when there are eight counts left. You can do it with 16 as well. Introduce the 16, introduce a 16 count move when there are 16 counts left before the next block starts. Why is this important? Because you don't want to find yourself starting the movement when the beat starts and the class catching up on the second beat. You want that when the phrase starts, you want your movement. You want your people to start. Remember, as the instructor, you are not the one training. Yours is to show, and it's best you show before. When the music starts saying, let's go, they go. That way, your people will join quicker on the movement. Because also the music is saying, let's go. 
And because you started in the middle of that other movement, it's not like they can just stand. They are doing something and then they flow onto the new movement. Which brings us to the next subject I'm going to talk about, which is now, as you are bringing in these movements like this, I just, I just thought about it. As you are bringing in this, oh, just like a DJ, before this song ends, you start a new song. And it's also important, how are you going to flow in the next movement? Because it has to flow. So next week, or next video, I'm going to demonstrate the flow. And then I'm also going to deal with the movements, how you structure them. Now, specific movements. And, and I don't know how I'm going to demonstrate it while I'm sitting down. But I think I can just do this. Yeah. Yeah, and how do I structure them? Because the movements also have to make sense. I can see now this video is already on 16 minutes. So I'm going to cut this one here right now. Thank you very much for watching. Please share these videos with other people so that more and more people can learn and so that we are able to preserve this type of a cardio box class. Because to be honest, we don't want it to die. It has worked for many years. And there is nothing like it. If it dies, what is happening out there is not the same. You understand? Uh, maybe it should get its own name. Maybe we should move away from cardio box and find a name that we can call this type of a box. And on that note, thank you very much. I'm out of here. I love you. Please subscribe. Like the video. Peace.